Hey guys, Greg Benz, and today I want to show you a quick overview of some of my favorite new features in Lamenzio version 6. Now there are over 130 new features, updates, and bug fixes contained in this release, so I can't possibly discuss all of them, but I just want to cover a few of the ones that I think are really interesting. Overall though, the theme of this release has been to minimize the changes in the user interface and really focus on the user experience. So you shouldn't look at Lumenzio version 6 and feel like it looks that different or feels that different from previous versions, but it's the biggest release yet with a tremendous amount of change underneath the hood designed in ways to help just anticipate your needs and make things easier without having to think about it or change your workflow. Let's jump right in. As you can see, the interface has hardly changed at all. The one new button in the CC panel is gonna be this question mark icon down at the bottom. When you click on it, you activate a special mode where you can then go and click on any other button in the panel to get dedicated help. For example, if I click on Sharp, you'll see I'm taken straight to a new dedicated page that's all about the Sharpen button. It tells me more about that button. It includes video tutorials, as well as at the bottom, links to other supporting videos. You can get to information about anything in Lamentia, but you now have a much quicker way of accessing any help you need through this question mark button. Vector masks have also been improved significantly in version six. For example, if we create a lasso selection around the foreground dunes here in order to boost the contrast, we're now asked whether we want to create a layer mask or a vector mask on the fly. We don't have to set a panel preference for all masks anymore. We can now choose individual masks to be layer masks or vector masks. And this just gives you more ways to use the vector mask, such as here where we've created this contrast adjustment for the foreground, but done nothing to add any file size because we don't have a layer mask. Vibrance and saturation masks have also been updated. If we go look at the gamut for this image, we'll see that the peak of this mountain is just too red. It's a little bit out of gamut. We can easily fix that with a saturation mask. Just click on saturation. We get an immediate mask where we can click on HSL. And now as we're viewing this out of gamut warning, we can live bring down the saturation in order to control that area. So from before to after, we see no real change in the image, but we've just nicely removed that out of gamut area through a saturation mask. The check luminosity button now has a few extra modes. Previously, you would click on check luminosity and you would just see the luminosity of the image, such as this. But now if you hold down the option key, you're going to see saturation. So you can very quickly make separate adjustments of saturation, or you can shift click on check L and view the hue of the image. In this case, this could be a very helpful way to try and understand the hue in this mid-ground sand. If I try to create a little different balance in the colors here, I could adjust this. And certainly this is a great way of working on composites or other advanced edits where you're trying to create independent hue, saturation, or lightness adjustments for more precision. Let's clear that and we'll skip over to another image here. And in this case, I've done some dodging and burning already. Sometimes it's a little hard to understand what you've done with it. One of the new options in Lomenzio version six is when you click on dodge, you will be presented with the option to visualize the dodge burn layer. Clicking yes, we now actually see the dodge burn layer as a single gray layer, even if it comes from a transparent layer. So it makes it very easy to see exactly where we've lightened or darkened the image in this particular case, and just click Dodge again to clear that. The zone map feature now allows you to pick zones directly from this map. Previously, we could just look at this map and make adjustments. Now though, we can click on either of the zone pickers and actually pick directly from this map. So if I wanna go and pick on these darker areas, I can go ahead and click OK, and I get the corresponding zone map, which in this case is zone zero. Sharpening has been improved significantly. We can add smart objects now for most forms of sharpening and we have deconvolution has been added as a new method of sharpening. Let's go ahead and click on deconvolution. Zooming into the detail here, we can see that the tremendous amount of detail has been added from before to after in these rocks. Let's zoom in one more layer here. At 200% you see from before to after a significant amount of extra detail which is what deconvolution sharpening is meant to do. It's a form of capture sharpening which offsets some of the softness that can occur when you're capturing your images and it's just an awesome way to take areas of detail and texture and bring out significantly more detail in your image. Lastly, the new convert to PSB options that were added to the panel in the previous release have also gotten a lot of attention. They're significantly more powerful. You can export and import channels and paths to your PSB documents so you have much more control over how you can work with these files. And I started to use this as a significant part of my workflow. When you export numerous layers, you not only make it easy to work with large documents in Lightroom, you actually speed up your workflow significantly. I'm finding that when I take a large file and export the base layers, I may see a speed increase of 15 times or more. For example, a file that previously took me about a minute and a half to open can now be opened in about five seconds. 
So that's just a quick overview of some of the new enhancements in Lumenzio version 6. Please be sure to see the release notes and the official announcement on my website.